Hello there, I'm Juliana Michaels and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm sharing the Lovebirds cards I created for the Tim Holtz 2024 Sizzix Everyday Live. I'm going to take you step by step through how I created them. And as always, I've got loads of little tips and tricks sprinkled throughout the video. If you're interested in the supplies I've used to create these cards, you can find them linked in the description box below. When you shop through those links, you help support me, and I appreciate that support so very much. Now let's get on with the making. So in this video, I'm going to be working with some new dies from the Tim Holtz 2024 Sizzix Everyday Release. And the die sets I'm going to be working with for this project are the Funky floral wreath and the uh, lovebird set and both of these are part of the vault series that Tim is releasing in uh, 2024 and so these are based off of the designs for these dies are based off of die sets that he had previously released and are since retired and the designs are sometimes combination of other sets and then kind of reimagined in different scales and sizes. So if you have the older sets that are similar to this, um, you could certainly use them for these projects. Just know that the size of the die cut is going to be a little different than these. So um, like these, the birds that are in this set are a little larger than the original set, as is this feather. Um, and the same thing with the wreath. This is a little larger than the original set but the original ones would work just the same to do this project that I'm gonna to create today. As for the paper I'm gonna be using, um, I'm gonna be using some backdrop papers. So this is just one of the neutrals out of one of the packs. I tend to keep my packs in these large envelopes from scrapbook.com and I just kind of slide the papers in there and then I usually keep, uh, the back of it in there with it just so I can kind of have a little bit of a reference of what the patterns are and um, you know that's just a way that I found to try to store these papers because they're kind of a different size and uh, along with the neutral paper so you could probably find this in any of the paper packs that he's released so you don't necessarily need like the newest one pretty much all of them have some kind of a neutral pattern in there you're going to need a piece of green craft stock so that's the craft paper with the green printed on top and um, there are several different shades of green in the pack if you use this paper so you um, can use any shade that of that you like this is, i've got a piece of vellum i'm going to be using a piece of uh, craft stock and a piece of distressed watercolor paper. And then um, this is a piece of coffee dyed uh, computer, like printer paper that I've used um, as well. The other paper that we're gonna be using is actually the packaging from one of the backdrop paper packs. So if you've kept these, good for you, because if, if you're willing to cut into them, you can use this for uh, part of the project and you know you can use either like the piece that's on the front of the packaging or you can cut out from the one on the back and I'll be showing you how to do that but you know even some of the uh, like this one here's the photomatic packaging and you know that would work for this too and be kind of fun so there's that I'm also going to be working with this stencil which is the berry leaf stencil, but this is from the mini set 57. So it's included with uh, two other stencils, or you could use the larger one. I just preferred the scale for the project. So we're also gonna be using some Distress Crackle Paste Translucent. And so this is the clear crackle paste. And I've just got a piece of press and seal in here to help keep it from drying out. And then we'll, you'll need a palette knife to apply this. I'm also going to be using some Distress Ink in Forest Moss, Peeled Paint, and Vintage Photo. So the first thing we're going to do just to give things time to dry is we're going to do the stenciling on the um, piece of patterned paper. And I've just cut this down to four by five and a quarter inches 
so that it's just a layer to go onto a standard A2 card, which is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I'm just gonna place the stencil kind of up here in this upper corner. And we're gonna just apply some Distress Ink with a blending brush. And you can use whatever type of brush you prefer. And then just kind of lightly apply the ink through the stencil. Just kind of working in a little circular motion. And I just kind of like to apply it just kind of in the upper corner there. And then you can kind of keep going with how dark you want it to be. If you want it to be a little bit darker, you could add in a little, little bit of forest moss. And if your stencil moves, just line it back up with the previous pattern. Now, the forest moss is quite a bit darker, so just keep that in mind. It will get, will, um, get darker on you a lot faster, so. Just kind of, I'm just, I'm not even really pushing down with this brush. I'm just barely rubbing it over the surface. You can always add more ink, but you can't take it away. So there's that one. And then we're going to do the same thing in this other corner. And once you're done with the stenciling, you just want to go and wash off your stencil so that, because um, we're going to use this again with the paste, and you want to just make sure you don't get ink into the paste. All right, so now we're going to take that same stencil, and we're just going to line it back up with where we had applied the ink. And then we're going to use a palette knife to apply some of the translucent crackle paste through the stencil. And as I mentioned earlier, this is just a piece of press and seal that I just, um, Tim recommends doing this. And so I've been trying to, to do it more regularly. In fact, I put it on all of my jars recently because um, I saw somebody had shared they had a whole jar dry up on them because um, this stuff will dry up. And, you know, especially if you don't use it for a while and it's not, um, sealed up really well. So you're just going to scrape this over the stencil. And it, like I kind of did with the ink, I'm not really applying it to the entire stencil, just kind of a little bit here in the upper corner. Just make sure you get, get a decent covering of it. Just make sure you can can't see the color through the stencil. And then just lift that up. And there we are. And now we're gonna do that same thing over here. Now this can get a little tricky. I do agree, so that you don't get it down into the other um, stencil part. So I kind of just use my fingers to help hold it up. And we just gotta get it lined up here first go and then I just kind of use my fingers to kind of help hold it up and then we can oh, my jar is almost empty it's a little bit difficult to get out of <laughs> all right so, we're just gonna apply some more paste here You might even want to like get the, get some paste on your spatula before you even get everything lined up because you can't, I don't really want to let go of it once I've got my fingers in the right spot here holding up this stencil. So, all right, so now we got that paste on. So then we're just going to peel that off. And then we're going to, you want to clean this stencil or put it into some water right away so the paste doesn't dry on there. And then just push that, if you're using the press and seal, just get it back down in there really good. Try to get all, get the air out. And then you're gonna set 
move this paper to the side to dry. You do not want to use your heat tool on this um, because otherwise it just doesn't crackle very good. So you don't want to do anything to try to speed it up. Um, so you're just going to let this sit to the side and let it air dry. And just depends on the humidity and temperature and everything in your home as to far as far as like how long that takes. So it's just kind of a little bit different everywhere. So once this is dry, um, we can move on to what else we're going to do with the background. But while that's drying, we can work on the embellishments for the card. Next up off camera, I die cut the wreath from the funky floral wreath from the green uh, craft stock and from a piece of Distress watercolor paper. And then I die cut some of the hearts from the Vault Lovebird set from some craft stock um, vellum and the coffee dyed papers. And I just cut a bunch of different sizes of each one so that I would have plenty to choose from. And the next thing we're gonna do here is work on the wreaths. And for this one, I'm just going to uh, sand this just to reveal some of that craft core. I don't know why, but lately this has just been one of my most favorite things to do. So this only works with paper that has a color printed onto a solid core. So, um, you know, this one, you know for sure when you flip it over, it's got the craft paper. That's the base or core of this. And then the green is actually printed on the top of it. And then, um, you know, there are some companies out there that have papers that have a white core that's the same way where it's white on one side and colored on the top. But then there are some companies out there that it's, you know, printed on both sides with either patterns or colors. So like technically Tim's patterned papers are a, like a white core paper. So if you were to sand, when you sand those, you're going to get a white uh showing through where here you get this craft color showing through so if you're not sure um if you've got you know you take like a little corner of the paper and if you tear it and look you know you can see that there's you know white or craft um when you tear the paper and then you'll know um typically the only things that are not uh that are like solid papers are like regular cardstock which is, um, you know, there's several different brands and stuff out there, but um, tip, typically regular cardstock is going to be solid um, through. All right, so, so there's that. And then all you have to do is just kind of dust off, and then it just, it just adds a little bit of distress. It's not something that is necessary. You can certainly skip this part if you don't want to do it. Um, I just love that it adds just a little bit of a distressed vintage vibe. So then for the wreath, I'm going to do some ink smishing with peeled paint and forest moss. And I've just got my distress sprayer here. And I'm just going to smush the ink pad onto my craft mat. Spritz that with a little water. And smush the paper into the ink. And... There you go, and then all you have to do is just dry this with with your heat tool. And so then once that's dry, I'm going to do the same thing with the little forest moss. Just give that a spritz and then tap it in. This has long been one of my favorite techniques for adding color to things. I just, I absolutely love this effect and it's so easy. And it's something you can do on die cuts. It's something you can do on background. So it's just kind of an easy to use technique. And you know, you can dip and repeat that inks machine process multiple times more than what I'm doing here if you want the colors to get a little darker because uh, every time you add another layer the colors are layering on top of each other and they're going to get a little bit darker. The other thing when you're doing this 
you also want to start with the lighter color first um, because the, the lighter color will not show up on top of the darker color, especially with the distress inks. So, um, so you wanna start with the light and then add the dark if you're gonna do two colors. So there's our wreath and then all we have to do is uh, glue these together. So it's kind of like that. You can kind of line them up however you like there. And then you can flip it over and put the glue on. Oop, get my pen out here. And you can put the glue on. Kind of find some spots that you know are touching. Get that tacked down. take a lot of glue and you can always add more once you get this um, that just kind of gets it put together there so next up what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ink the edges of these uh, craft heart cardstock hearts and um, just using a little vintage photo to do that you can use whatever brown you prefer, you know, if you like walnut stain or ground espresso. There we go. So then those are all ready to go. And the last thing we're gonna do is die cut the birds. And these are the Lovebird dies from the Vault Lovebird set. And as you can see, I've taken one of the, the packaging pieces. So this is the part that like folds up in the front, but you can also use the ones on the back. And I've just kind of played around with the placement of the birds. And then I'm using just a piece of mint tape to just help hold them in place once I got them where I wanted them so that they wouldn't shift around while I was running them through the die cutting machine. And like for this one, you know, originally when I laid this on here, it was like in the yellow and I thought, oh, I don't know that I want a bunch of yellow showing um, on the design here. So I, you know, played around with its placement and where to put it and then, you know, put the other two on. So then I'm just gonna run this through my uh, machine. All right, so I did the die cutting and here are our three birds and they just kind of look like a little patchwork quilt to me without having to do all the patchwork yourself. And what I did then to um, give these a little more interest, and as you can see, here's how the piece looks with them cut out. And you, know, you still have another little section there if you wanted to use that for something else. So the next thing I did with these is just rub my sanding tool over the edges just to, again, add a little bit of distress. This is not something you'd have to do, and you don't need to do a lot of it. You're just kind of wanting to hit the edges to give it a little interest. And when you're working on these little smaller piece, like sections here, like their feet and stuff, just kind of go real gentle there so you don't accidentally tear them like I almost did. And there's, there's that. And then you can take, probably there's enough ink even left on from when we did that earlier. And then you just can kind of ink the edges up a little bit. Because as you could see when I rubbed over this, how it turned white. So this is a white core paper as well. You know, there's color printed on it, the packaging details. And so 
then this just kind of with that ink then just goes into where we sanded and just adds a neat little distressed touch. So you can add a little more there. So you can just really see it on the dark sections, but it just kind of gives it a cool vintage vibe. And then the next step, what I'm gonna do is take these to my sewing machine and I'm gonna add some mach machine stitching along these white lines here, just kind of using those as the guide for where to do the sewing. All right, so then once you're finished with the sewing, you're gonna have all these little threads hanging over. And then what I prefer to do is just put some adhesive on the back and then tack those down and then trim off the excess instead of just cutting it because then you'll have those little, then you'll have little threads sticking up. So that's just my preference. I'm just gonna put a little uh, double-sided tape down along here. And then, I guess, so then you can just kind of tack that over onto it. <laughs> Trim off the excess. And there you are. So then I'll just repeat that on the rest of these birds. All right, so I am back and this has dried and I just wanna get, get you a little close up of the texture that was created with the crackle. And if you wanted to highlight this a little bit more and make it more grungy, you could certainly rub over this with like a distress crayon like a walnut stain distress crayon but I am not going to do that all I'm going to do is just ink the edges of this with some vintage photo distress ink and just using a little blending tool here and just working that around the edges to try because I always find that look, if I try to do over this paste it starts ripping up my sponges so I'm gonna just see how it works I'm not well, that works pretty good so I'm gonna try it with these little brushes and see <clears throat> I'm gonna maybe start trying it this way and see if I like how it kind of gets in the paste a little bit better too because like with the brush you kind of can't get down once you've got that paste on there you kind of can't get down in there as easily so these brushes have a little more flexibility that way so I kind of like that so, thing to keep in mind for the future and then of course some of this is kind of hanging over the edge what you can do is just take some scissors and just trim that off if you want. Let's make sure none of it's hanging over too much. And then to just distress this a little bit, I'm gonna give a little spritz of water. Dab that a little bit with the paper towel. And then dry this with my heat tool. Um, you can just see how it just adds, the water droplets just add a little bit of interest there. It's subtle, but I love, love what it does. 
and then just, you know, keep this moving. You don't want to, you're not trying to, um, you know, reheat the paste. So you just want to be a little bit cautious with keep, you know, want to keep it moving so it's not holding it in one spot for too long. And if you're super worried about it, then um, just let it air dry. It's certainly an option. And I'm just gonna go back over this, just darken it a little bit more. Because so I can actually ink with the brush, it's kind of getting down in those cracks a little bit. Especially down in there. You can see that. And I really like how that looks. Down. All right, so to finish this off, I'm just gonna add some machine stitching around the outer edge and then the um, final process will just be a matter of, you know, adhering the different embellishments and adding the sentiment. So there you go. Now to finish assembling the card, what I did was took a piece of craft paper and just scored it and folded it in half to create my card base. And then I inked the edges with some of the vintage photo distress ink. And then now I'm just going to adhere my uh, panel to the front of my card. And I, I like to use this tape, but you, know, you can obviously use whatever type of adhesive you prefer. I'm just not a super fan of liquids with thinner papers, but that's just my personal preference. And then I'm just gonna peel off that one top piece, kind of get this centered on here. And then I can push that down and then flip it over, peel off the other liners. And That is all done. And then like I said, that once you get it adhered down, that paper that was kind of wrinkly like is nice and flat. And then I'm just gonna finish off by adhering the, the bird with a little foam tape, add some of the hearts, and then the sentiment, I just typed this up on my uh, vintage typewriter and uh, inked the edges of it. And then I'm gonna pop that up as well. So there you go. Here is a look at the finished card that I made in the video. And the ones that you will see in Tim's live are actually exactly the same other than I die cut the bird from a different piece of paper. So like for this one, I used uh, you know, this packaging and for the ones that are in the live, I actually used the bur the packaging from like that rainbow set and I trimmed off this little extra piece because I just thought it was kind of cool and plan on using it for something else and and then this is what I cut the birds out of the pattern pieces so so there you go and I hope you enjoyed this video and seeing how this card came to to be until next time stay crafty my friends Thanks so much for watching. I'm so grateful for you. I was wondering if you could do me a quick favor and subscribe to my channel or leave me a thumbs up or a comment. If you're feeling extra generous, I'd love for you to share about my channel with your friends. All of these things help out us YouTubers so much and it would mean so much to me to have your support.